How are we doing everybody? Captain Cody Davis here. I am on the road right now heading to my favorite tackle shop in the world, Okeechobee Fishing Headquarters. If you guys are ever coming down here to fish the lake on your own, definitely check them out. You can follow them if you don't already on social media. They have an Instagram and a Facebook account. Definitely check out their website. They are uh, located in Okeechobee City on the north end of the lake. And Mike Krause over there uh, runs an excellent shop and he has everything that you're gonna need to have a good time out here and catch big fish on Okeechobee. Everything and more, I should say. Uh, if you have any questions about the lake, if you come down, you know, what's safe to run? What's the water level? Where are the fish at? If you have problems with electronics, your Minn Kota trolling motor, whatever. He's got you covered. He's more than happy to help and he's very knowledgeable. So definitely check them out. I'll probably shoot some video while I'm in there. I just got to go there to pick up a few rods and some other things. But while I'm re while the reason I'm really checking in here is I wanted to show you guys something pretty cool here on the lake. I get a lot of questions via social media, email, just clients on the boat asking me about the inshore species that we have here on the lake. You know, they kind of just want to know, you know, where do they come from? You know, how many snook and tarpon are there in the lake? How common is it to catch them? Uh, what else lives out here? All kinds of stuff. So I was going to kind of going to show you guys a, uh, a spot that has a lot to do with our inshore fish being in here and kind of just give you a backstory and you know discuss these fish's behavior so snook tarpon jacks all call the lake home uh, we have a giant population of manatees out here and there are bull sharks out here as well a lot of people don't see them but I myself have seen two and I know of other people that have seen them so they do you know live out here and uh, there's a lot more than people think of these fish you know i think there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of snook and tarpon that live out here the reason they don't get caught more than they do but before i get into that i think there are more snook and tarpon caught out here every year than most people realize but the reason they don't get caught more is just because of uh where they live in the lake you know if you come to okeechobee you're coming to flip thick grass throw a big swim bait and heavy grass you're fishing 65 pound braid back in the thickest stuff you can find and that's what everyone comes to okeechobee to enjoy that type of fishing but where these big snook and tarpon typically get caught are in the rim canal in man-made dug channels for boats to go through anything with some hard rock structure uh you know rock flat rock you want hard bottom and you need to have uh, you know plentiful number of bait in the area i should say or a pl uh, plentiful bait population in an area so not many people come to okeechobee or even fish that way the rim canal that runs around the whole south end of the lake is a very good place to catch some snook i've caught some there most of these snook are getting caught and tarpon are getting caught on rattle traps crankbaits any kind of here i'm up on the dike and this is the port my you can see here, this is the giant spillway. So when they're discharging water out of the lake, it comes out of these spillway gates. And basically this canal takes you straight to Stewart, Florida. Uh, it's gonna pop out just southwest of like Palm City or the Roosevelt Bridge, if you would. And this long cement alley is actually the boat lock, which is wide open right now. So if you were to come in a boat, you could literally just drive straight through the lock and be out in Okeechobee which in turn, there is nothing stopping snook, tarpon, jacks, sharks, manatees, what have you, from just swimming straight through this lock right out into the lake. When they are discharging here, there are giant, giant snook, tarpon, bass, crappie, everything. They just kind of meander and sit right here and feed on all the big shad and bluegill that are getting washed through. Now, over here, I get asked all the time, how big is the lake? You know, is it really that big? Can you see across it? How rough does it get? Uh, you know, why do you need these boats that go so fast to run around in these tournaments? Does it get rough? I'm sure this is not going to do the lake any justice on a GoPro. But Lake Okeechobee is a small ocean. All right, it's huge. This is probably the only spot on the lake where you can stand up and get a feel for how big it really, really is. All right, you cannot even come close to seeing the other side. Lake Okeechobee is a 30 mile circle. Deep, you know, out in the middle, it's probably only 15, 16 feet deep. So you're not gonna get the big swells like you would on the Great Lakes, but it does turn into a washing machine out there. So you definitely wanna be careful, 
especially if you've never ran the lake before, you're unfamiliar with it. You can actually see here, there is what we call a spoil island right here. And it's hard to see on film, but if you look for about 150, 200 yards, uh, you know, west of the island, you could see the waves breaking over what we would call a reef, okay? Which is probably left over from when they dug this channel here. They'll, you know, displace everything over there. And there's hundreds of areas like this in the lake. And that's what causes boat accidents. If you're ever running around the lake and you see any kind of grass, trees, if you will, like you see here, just out in open water, stay far, far away from it. Because there's a reason all that stuff's growing there because it's shallow and it's a rock bottom. So this is where a lot of these, you know, fish, saltwater fish kind of come through at. And they have a choice. They can go, they can go north, they can go south, or as I mentioned, these hard bottom channels, this channel's gonna run all the way across the lake. And this is the channel that these boats use to get from the east coast to the west coast. Uh, it's just a shortcut instead of going all the way around the tip of Florida they can cut straight through the lake if they're careful and get over there so you know that channel is obviously uh it's gonna have deeper water in it it's gonna have current flowing through there so no one really fishes it no one spends time doing it because a lot of times it's rough and nasty out here but I'm sure there are tons of snook and tarpon that live out there in that channel but then they can also come out and make a left and we have another channel that runs down to the south end and that's where a lot of our snook and tarpon get caught. They kind of follow that channel all the way down and end up sitting in the areas that we like to fish down there. So pretty neat. Um, I might try a few casts on the other side. There's no, there's no flowing water. There's no current. They don't have the spillway open, but what the hell, it's worth a shot. We'll see what happens. Uh, all right, so I made a couple of casts, but it's freezing out. It's 60. Hard to tell. All right, guys, so you can see we made it to Okeechobee Fishing Headquarters. Uh, we're gonna have to get in and out of here. I'll try to shoot footage, you know, do what I can, but we gotta get back on the road before it's too late here. I don't know how well you can see this, but I'm gonna try and... You are reading that correctly. It says 58, and it's 3.30 in the afternoon here, and it's 58 already. That means here in South Florida, by six tonight, I, I really don't want to say it, but it might get down to 51, 52. You know, that's nominated and categorized as a natural disaster down here. Local businesses shut down, schools shut down, no cars allowed on the road. Uh, you know, there's going to be roadblocks. You know, we're going to be putting shutters up, cranking the generators. It's, it's going to get ugly. So, I'm going to have to get in here and do my shopping and hopefully I can make it home before, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm assuming if it drops below 54, your, your, uh, the gasoline in your truck probably freezes over, right? And the truck won't run. I don't know. So we're going to try and get in and get out of here. So we're in the shop here. You can see it's a badass tackle shop. And uh, if it catches fish on Okeechobee or just in Florida in general, Mike's got it in here. Uh, huge selection of rods and reels. And I mean, every single soft plastic bait that's ever caught a bass in Florida, he's got it. Frogs, all the, you know, every hard bait you need. Uh, you know, he's got it. He's an avid fisherman. He's a tournament angler Does very well out here on the lake. So he, he you know, he knows what he needs to have in his store. Also Got you a badass fish tank here. He's got the clown knife fish in there These are not in Okeechobee yet, but they are in some canal systems and whatnot further south Got you a big old peacock bass there Obviously lumpy the largemouth so, 
cool place if you're coming down with kids. You can they can be entertained by the fish tank while you do your shopping. Really, really neat. Let's see if I can get a better, closer look at this clown knife fish for you. Running away a little bit, but like I said, definitely come in, check him out. And if you need help with anything, Mike's, you know, willing to help you with anything he can. And there's nothing that you're going to need to fish Okeechobee that he does not have. So definitely come check him out. He obviously has live bait also.